All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. It is the Earth Master out here, 7.38 p.m. California time, October 25th, 2024. Halloween next week, goodness. Pretty crazy uh, to think that we got November coming up here on the board in just a few days. Seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet for now. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.9 into Alaska. Also, some further movement there into Southern California around the Death Valley area where we're still seeing some movement here tonight with a couple smaller quakes there. We're not seeing any fours like we seen out here earlier this morning. That was quite the uptick uh, in earthquake activity out here. So far, we got a total tally of about 30 earthquakes of various magnitudes. Three of those are in the 4.0 range with the highest being a 4.7, but get this. This earthquake swarm did not kick off with a 4.7. It started off pretty much with a uh, a little small. Well, let's see here. Did it really? It looks like they added this on here. Hold on, let me see what we got. Making me eat my words. <laughs> Stand by here for a second. Twenty fifth. There's that 4.7, 4.2. So it does look like uh, this 4.2 stirred things up out here. There was a couple of earthquakes prior to that over the last few days, some threes and ones in there. Um, but it looks as though that four pointer may have triggered further escalation here because we've seen a, a 4.7 following that and then another 4.5 and then various magnitudes following that uh, uh, event there this morning. So. Uh, you know, it's an interesting area. Uh, what I am seeing here is that it's on a broader scale region, uh, not centered mainly in one area. But it looks like they've done a little bit of adjustment here in the location of these earthquakes. Uh, a couple newer ones up here on the western side of the swarm. But it's around this mountain range here. Not for sure what's out there. Obviously, you know, there's there might be some older volcanic features out here. Uh, but this is, I believe, fault system related and potentially related to the town pass fault, I believe it is, right there, leading into the uh, northern edge of the Death Valley fault zone. It's got a little bit of migration here to the south, is noted towards this mountain range, but who knows, it could be on a fault system that maybe no one's even heard of or maybe not even on the map here. Uh, but either way, it's a seismic uptick event. You know, we got 30 earthquakes here. That's a, a decent amount. And that's just the newest region seen uptick out here in the last couple months of seismic increasing events out here across Southern California. That's the newest one. We've seen elevated events around Bakersfield, Malibu, the Puente Hills Rest Fault, um, the Fontana earthquake swarm. You know, it's, it's not just one area. It's a broad region. And guess what's sleeping out here? We got all this earthquake swarming going on. And it's trying to wake up the San Andreas Fault out there. It really is. Uh, there's one on the... Uh, it's a little branch here. The San Bernardino Mountain section there. The San, San Andreas Fault Zone. In, a, in the bend area right here. It's a little concerning because any type of activity just here off of the plate boundary is indicative that things are starting to move. Starting to strain out here. Obviously, it's been... 300 years since the last major earthquake out here on the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. And this fault system here, folks, this plate boundary, you know, that, that harbors a lot of strain in between two major plates. We're talking about the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate here. Eventually, you know, eventually Los Angeles will be up here around the San Francisco area and they can be neighbors. You got this area of the land moving to the northwest. You know, so uh, eventually this uh, whole city area will be up there. But that's no telling, you know, if the sun will be uh, uh, scorching the earth by then. It's going to a long time. We don't even want to get into that. But we do want to talk about the possibility here of a near-term uh, large earthquake striking out here on the San Andreas Fault. It's all point to that with all these individual swarms all over the place surrounding uh, and encompassing this plate boundary. It's either going to be the Garlock Fault Shear Zone or the San Andreas Fault here, I feel, is uh, primed for some bigger earthquake activity. Maybe one in the same here. One may trigger the other. 
kind of acts as a spring here between the plate boundaries, right? You got a totally opposite shear system here compared to the normal plate boundary. Things would be much smoother without the Garlock fault shear zone, but it adds strain with that spring type operation here. Um, it's uh, it definitely building up out here for sure, folks. And uh, it can happen at any, any time. Uh, Northern California, not a whole lot going on out there. One earthquake just shy of the Cascadia subduction zone early this morning. Nothing major going on across the Cascadia for now. Let me uh, double check the trimmer map here tonight. Crazy to think that the live stream has gone down so many times here today. Um, but it's it's getting annoying and uh, someone's taking advantage of it. They know I'm sick. So they're probably like, all right, let's play a little game with him. Let's let's make him stress a little, bring his stream down. And every time the stream goes down, I lose a notification for my videos when I get the stream back up and running, right? So we put out uh, one video this morning and two live stream notifications already. So I've lost my three notification systems here from YouTube for this update video. So not many people are going to see the update video unless they click on the channel or uh, folks share it um, and I, I think that's the the whole point that they're trying to do is trying to bring the channel down uh, and see if it can affect my views and whatnot the statistics here of this channel uh, trimmer activity confined here across the southern end of the Cascadia really nothing major going on but uh, that could have something to do with this little earthquake out past this Cascadia just shy of the Cascadia subduction zone continue to watch it folks all I know is elevated seismic activity out here is a key indicator of big time strain building up against the plate boundary. That's a San Andreas fault. Swarm of activity up through Idaho. You can kind of follow that trend here uh, where strain will be building up across this area, across the mountain ranges leading to Yellowstone, but nothing in terms of uh, volcanic activity. This is mainly, oh, let's go over here, mainly uh, stress on, on the fault systems. Not a whole lot going on there across the uh, Yellowstone seismograph stations. It's weird. Ever since I started visiting visiting this site again, the Yellowstone overview, the stream started to go down. So it could be anyone. Got to remember when you visit a website like this, unless you're on a VPN, uh, virtual private network, your IP address is available to these folks. And if they have some bad intents, you know, bad intentions there, then uh, yeah, I mean, it, it could be anybody. It could be this. It could be the Earthquake 3D program. It could be someone on the other end of the seismograph stations there where I'm con connected to an IP address to get this data. And, you know, it's, the Internet is a crazy world. And uh, when there's bad people out there on the other side of it, it can uh, be a headache. Uh, not a whole lot going on through the uh, rest of the country. Let's see what we got for newer activity worldwide. Got deeper movement here into the Izu Trench once again. Things starting to stir up there with that deep earthquake. Deep earthquake activity there around uh, uh, China, it looks like. 4.1. Some newer activity out here in the 3 range, but really nothing big going on there for now. But again, deeper activity is going to trigger the large-scale adjustment here in the coming hours and days. New Zealand 3-pointer out there in the South Island area. Uh, aside from that, uh, you know, I guess we'll continue to watch uh, Southern California here. A couple smaller earthquakes there venturing into the area. Uh, well, space weather activity. Really not expecting much here in the coming days in terms of the aurora activity. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thinking this is going to be a dud. Uh, obviously, it was a strong X flare, but we're just getting barely. Uh, a glancing blow from the western edge of the CME that popped off and really not expecting much. They're they're calling for a, a quick jolt of a G1 class storm. I don't see it. This is for tonight. Um, nothing really going on on the Aurora forecast. No signs of any CME activity. Uh, so we'll just uh, have to play it by sight because we're not, uh, again, we're not really expecting much here in terms of the Aurora's. Now, flare threat has been elevated, 15% chance for the X-flare. That is due uh, to a couple active regions out here coming into view, the Earth-facing view here. Numerous sunspots showing quite the complexity out here. Uh, a lot of intermingling, so to speak, here 
of the magnetic polarities within those sunspots and that's what you need there uh, to produce that special spark called a solar flare right now things are not sparking so to speak although we're taking a little stair-stepping ladder event here it looks like starting to go back up here on the charts indicating on uh, some further escalation there of maybe some soon-to-be flares here in the area uh, so we'll definitely watch that from that regional sunspot uh, aside from that uh, let's see what else we got here for the numerical models latest model run here got california and the west coast dealing with uh, some welcoming rain showers and snow and some cooler temperatures out here across the west coast that's going to intermix here with some warmer environments out around the southern plains midwest area and create some severe weather potential out here across oklahoma northward as we head into next week another storm system out here across the west coast to uh, uh make the uh, ground even wetter out here we need it here in california unfortunately these northern systems here uh, a lot of colder air but not a lot of moisture associated with them so it's kind of um, not a big rain maker but we'll take any rain we can get as uh, far as a hurricane potential look at southern california is going to get uh, some rainfall as well looks like uh, next weekend and early next week that's going to be november third time period so that would be next next week the following week not this coming next week but yeah all right, November 3rd. That's easier to say, I guess. Hurricane activity showing further off the coast of Florida. That is good news. Um, so we'll have to watch that. Most, uh, at least the last couple models have been showing that hurricane rather broad and strong, but remaining off the coast of Florida there. So hopefully that remains as is in the forecast. Some cooler weather dipping down into the uh, a good portion of the country here as we head into the second week of November. Some snow in the forecast, it looks like. High pressure ridging out here on the west coast. Uh, I don't like that. That means warmer temperatures out here. Um, but I guess we'll see what happens. Um, let's take a look here at the assembles. Uh, 27th. No, go back a little bit. So we got high pressure that's going to get uh, squashed here this weekend from a insider low pressure system here dipping into northern california that allows for ridging out across the eastern portion of the country for halloween uh, right around halloween time that's going to be right about there at 6 p.m on halloween high pressure across the eastern portion of the country cooler and perhaps rainier conditions for halloween night we put that into motion high pressure building back behind that and you know it's it's hard to say exactly this far out anything can change um, i'm hoping we get some low pressure out here dipping down across the western coast here again uh, we'll have to see how that plays out i don't like these zonal flows here it keeps everything barely stationary and uh, i like to see these dips indicating some cooler temperatures and rainier uh, conditions out there we'll definitely uh, keep our eyes on that uh, Hawaii activity out here, really nothing major going on there across the area for now. All eyes here on Southern California for now. And uh, we'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow morning for the Saturday night update. We'll see how long this stream lasts. <coughs> I'm, uh, I'm hoping it doesn't go down. You know, it's it's been a little while since it's, since it's gone down in you know in 24 hours like three or four times there there's no issues with my internet everything is streaming just fine um you know excellent condition on all the internet and whatnot but it is what it is i'm hoping whoever is behind it gets a little bored I, I don't see why that would be so exciting for them on a friday night to bring my stream down but hey to each their own i guess i would just ask that they would stop it and uh, just basically leave the stream alone and go away anyway have a good day folks good night we'll catch you guys back out here for the saturday morning update take care about ready to lose my voice